Well, a second Boeing whistleblower has died suddenly, and none other than his own mom is saying that she's wondering if someone did something to him. And the reason she feels that way is that doctors told her they've never seen anything like what happened to her son. This man was 44 years old, according to his aunt. His name was Josh Dean. And he would inspect Boeing, Boeing parts that were being made uh, by an aspect of Spirit Airlines and had voiced concerns loudly uh, to the mainstream media about problems with the manufacturing with Boeing, uh, big safety concerns. Uh, NPR did an expose on this in February. Now he... Not to mention, this is the second one in less than two months. The second Boeing whistleblower that's mysteriously unlived, but in mysterious ways in two months, less than two months. Turns up dead in April. In in a way, basically, he got sick in April and had this two week sickness that doctors said, whoa, we've never seen anything like this. We're not sure how this happened. Uh, very mysterious. It, it, it apparently included a stroke and a list of viruses. Uh, according to his mom. So when you take a glance at the mainstream media reports on this, it's like, oh, he he died of the flu. You guys are freaking out your conspiracy. Man, I, I don't have any stomach right now. For There's two Boeing whistleblowers that have been, I don't want to say they've been unlived, allegedly. They are not, they're no longer with us. And I, I'm not even making a claim. I'm just saying, that's something that we need to look at. This is Joshua Dean again. She's going to explain a little bit more. This is Ivory Hecker, if you don't know, just to make sure to give her credit and shout out. She is absolutely great. Found out about her during uh, James O'Keefe. You might remember James O'Keefe. This might be two years ago now. She worked for Fox, I believe. She worked for some corporate local outlet. And she was tired of being the zombie. She was tired of doing the scripts they told them. She went to her managers and said, wait, this doesn't add up. And of course, once you start doing that in the Matrix, they, you're in danger. She did, she did her own type of whistleblowing, knew that she was going to get fired or have to leave. And now she's independent, reaching her full potential, and she can go to sleep at night, I think. And she's going to go on more here, but Joshua Dean, this is insane. Joshua Dean was 45, worked as a quality auditor at Spirit Aerosystems. So this is a contractor with Boeing, like a part supplier. He passed away suddenly from what was initially reported as a severe infection. The man was reportedly healthy. Just sudden, it wasn't like this was known or a long-term thing or anything like that. They said he succumbed to an MRSA infection. So that's I mean, I'm not a doctor. I think that's the one where you sometimes you see a NFL player have to get a surgery and then sometimes they get an infection. You can get an infection kind of easily. But this one rapidly progressed. I, I'm not still not seeing like if you'd had a surgery recently, it's possible. It's it's there's other ways, but what caused this? Maybe they had already used the other one on the previous whistleblower the self-inflicted weapon wound that would have been that would have been really weird if both of them succumbed to self-inflicted weapon wounds so allegedly hypothetically you would need a different avenue so that's his background the infection rapidly progressed overwhelming his body leading to his untimely passing so now we have questions and I don't have any stomach for anybody to sick. I'm not doing a conspiracy theory. I have questions as to how could that happen? What are the probabilities of that happening? Have you done a thorough autopsy? The mother has questions. I, I'm not I'm not here to allege something I can't prove. Theorists. No, his family is wondering what's going on. And the fact that he he blew the whistle recently and now he's dead at such a young age and his family says he was remarkably healthy is, is very strange. Um, I want to show you some of his aunts and his mom's Facebook posts about his death. And then we'll talk about the news reports. This is Josh Dean 
You can see how young and fit he was right there. His aunt, Carol Dean Parsons, wrote on Facebook yesterday, I am grateful for the prayers of my family and friends for this young man. He passed away yesterday morning and his, am his absence will be deeply felt. We will always love you, Josh, 44 years old. She had been posting daily updates on Facebook about his condition, begging people for prayers because it was worsening. I'll show you another post that she made with his pictures. Two days ago, my dear nephew Joshua passed away this morning. Thank you for all your prayers and thoughts. You can see him right there, not a guy who should just randomly die of the flu. So it's And that's not, it's important to know that doesn't obviously prove anything just because he looks like he's not, you know, looks healthy, What whatever that seems like, doesn't mean something couldn't, be, couldn't have been wrong, but it's important to know what the family's saying. The family's not coming out and saying, hey, don't, don't assume anything, we had problems. His family is looking for a thorough autopsy to find out exactly what happened. Um, NPR is uh, reporting uh, that Dean rapidly went from healthy to being hospitalized. Mm. Uh, his family that said that this man took rapidly. remarkable care of his health mm. and was just in tip top shape and mm. really cared about not doing anything unhealthy. Um, yet NPR reports that Dean started feeling sick around two weeks ago. His mother, Virginia Green, told NPR that he stayed home from work for a couple of days, but things got worse. Mm -hmm. On Sunday, April 21st is when I got a call, she says, from, from him that he was really sick and having trouble breathing, Green said. Mm -hmm. um, quote, said that he went to an immediate care and they told him he had strep throat. Now, her Facebook post doesn't line up with that date. Uh, NPR reporting that date of April 21st. Maybe they got the date wrong, but let me show you what she wrote actually on Facebook on April 20th about her son's severe condition. Ginger Green, I'm sorry I haven't posted anything about my son, Josh. I've just been so overwhelmed with what's going on. My son is fighting for his life. He tested positive for influenza B and MRSA that went through pneumonia, uh, went into pneumonia. His infection spread throughout his whole body into his bloodstream. His lungs are completely whited out and he had an, they had to intubate him. His condition worsened and he needed to be transferred to a hospital in o Oklahoma City. They were in Wichita, Kansas, I guess. Uh, so he goes to Oklahoma City and she says, um, they had to put him on a life support machine. He is on dialysis too because he has so much fluid through his body. And they had, uh, they say his kidneys and liver aren't doing well. They did a CT scan of the brain and saw that he has uh, had a stroke. They stopped the sedation and pain meds so he could wake up. They need him to wake up to see how much damage the stroke has done. It's been two days and he is still. still uh, still has not woke up. He's in very critical conditions. Doctors say it's a wait and see game. Please lift him up in prayer. Well, here's my takeaway from this at this point is we need answers to questions and questions are important. I question myself daily, every decision, everything. John Barrett, or I'm sorry, John Barnett was the first one and I'll do a link somewhere here if I can remember to the previous video I did on that, um, which was fairly intensive for, a, you know, like a 10 minute video. What other things could they, because this whistleblowing, what was this about? This was really, he was the supplier. So he was involved in auditing and quality control at Spirit, where he identified and reported critical safety concerns. He was concerned primarily on issues surrounding the manufacturing process of the Boeing 737 MAX planes. I was just on one. And no problems, thankfully. Among the concerns reported were improper drilling of holes and other practices that could compromise the structural integrity of the planes. I'm wondering, is there anything else more that, that be beyond what we already know that he knew about? Or would it open the door to something else? That's That's... That's what I want to know as well with this whole situation. And asking questions is a good thing. Middle MAGA.